Mariette Monia Lewis, also known as Wildfire, was an extraordinary talented sculptor with an interesting story. She was of Native American and black descent, her mother being of Chippewa and her father Haitian, both died when she was young. Historians have found it hard to pinpoint her date of birth, so many details remain unknown about this amazing talent. She and her half-brother Samuel were raised by their aunts. They would travel to places like Niagara Falls, Toronto, Canada, and Buffalo, New York, selling native Indian baskets and moccasins to tourists to make a living. In 1852, her brother Samuel set off for California during the gold rush, eventually becoming successful and was able to finance her education. In 1856, Lewis enrolled in a Baptist abolitionist school, but left three years later, having been declared to be wild. But records show that she had exemplary conduct, grades, and attendance at Central College. Her classes included Latin, French, grammar, arithmetic, drawing, composition, and public speaking. She later attended Oberlin College in Ohio, where she experienced daily racism. She was accused of poisoning two classmates that she boarded with. After serving them both drinks, apparently they became very ill. One night, while walking home, she was dragged into an open field and beaten horribly by a white mob and left for dead. Soon after this incident, she was found innocent of poisoning the girls due to a lack of evidence. In 1864, she moved to Boston to pursue a career as a sculptor. Her keeps introduced her to already established sculptors in the area, as well as abolitionist writers featuring her in their newsletters. Edward Augustus Brackett, an established marble sculptor, agreed to instruct her. Under his instruction, she made her own sculpting tools and sold her first sculpture of a woman's hand for $8. Soon after, she opened her own solo studio. She took a liking and was inspired by great abolitionists and Civil War heroes, and her pieces commonly depicted busts of these types. Her early famous piece was a bust of Robert Gall Shaw, the commander of an African-American Civil War regiment from Massachusetts. Lewis was interviewed and written about by many prominent abolitionists of her time. She was featured in abolitionist newsletters such as The Broken Fetter, The Christian Register, and The Independent. With the small success and money she made from selling her sculptures, she moved to Rome. I was practically driven to Rome to obtain the opportunities for art culture and to find a social atmosphere where I was not constantly reminded of my color. The land of liberty had no room for a colored sculptor. She had to be conscious of her artwork. The consumers of her art were white, and in order to please them, her pieces commonly depicted European features, although telling stories of native Indian and black people. She had to balance her personal identity with her profession and who she was to the public. She was the first native Indian slash black sculptor, male or female, to gain international acclaim in Western sculptural tradition. In Rome, she was introduced to a group of artists and established her own space in 18th century Italian sculptor Antonio Canova's former studio, where she received a lot of professional support. Italy was not as racist as America and gave her better opportunities as a black artist. There, she had more spiritual and social freedom to be who she wanted to be. Most of her adult years were spent in Italy. In 1873, a New Orleans newspaper stated that she had profited from two $50,000 commissions. Her popularity grew and her studio soon became a tourist attraction. She had many exhibitions and in her work, she expressed her native Indian and black heritage. Forever Free, one of her more known works depicts a black man and woman breaking the yoke of slavery. Another one called The Arrow Maker depicts a father showing his daughter how to make an arrow. By the late 1880s, her style of artwork was on a decline in popularity. She continued to make her pieces for various patrons in Italy. In 1877, former President Ulysses S. Grant commissioned her for a portrait and was impressed with the final result. Frederick Douglass also came to visit her in Rome. She moved to London and not much is known of her in her later years. She never married and had no children. She announced an engagement in 1873, only revealing that the man was of the same color as her, but nothing else was ever heard from it. She is quoted as saying, Some praise me because I am a colored girl. I don't want that kind of praise. I had rather you would point out my defects, for that will teach me something. Mary Edmonia Lewis died on September 17, 1907, in the Hammersmith Borough Infirmary. She was buried in St. Mary's Roman Catholic Cemetery in London. In 2017, a GoFundMe made by Bobby Reno, a New York historian, was successful in raising money to restore Edmonia Lewis's grave. This is the story of a wildfire burning a path through the forest, a visionary, an amazing talent, known to the world as Mary Edmonia Lewis.